So last week we did the unboxing of our first Meteor Lake laptop to come into the studio. Yeah, I went out and I purchased it. I didn't get a review unit, but that didn't stop us as we had a really great turnout. For those that didn't see it, I'll leave a link to the replay in the description below. You don't wanna miss that. And we also did a bonus unboxing of another Meteor Lake laptop. So again, check it out if you didn't catch it. We'll talk about that very soon. But as far as this Asus laptop is concerned, we're talking about the Asus ZenBook 14 OLED, a follow-up to one of the most popular laptops of last year, and one of the best bang for the buck laptops you can get in 2023. That's the Asus ZenBook 14X OLED. Now, let's talk about what we have here with Meteor Lake. Uh, supposedly a better processor, a more efficient processor, better battery life, improved graphics, and we saw a lot of bugginess at, during the unboxing. We couldn't get Geekbench to run. I couldn't get PC Mark 10 to run after the live stream. But good news, folks, there were some updates. There was a BIOS update, there was a firmware update, and a bunch of Windows updates that I think seemed to have solved the problem. I was able to get Geekbench to run. I was able to get PC Mark 10 to run. So all the benchmarks are in. I've been putting it through its paces ever since. And this is an interesting one, folks, so you don't want to miss it. So sit back, relax, and here is my review of the Asus ZenBook 14 OLED, all new, ready for 2024. Coming up. Now, before we get to the unit itself, I just want to let everyone know, in the interest of transparency and full disclosure, I'm not being paid by Asus. I'm not being sponsored by Asus. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Asus is not getting copy approval. That means they're seeing this video for the first time, just like you. This unit was purchased with my own money. This is not a review unit from Asus. Now, pricing for this brand new laptop comes in at $1299.99. I picked mine up over at Best Buy. For those interested, I will leave a link in the description below for more information and we can buy one. Now that comes with 32 gigabytes of RAM, comes with one terabyte of storage, and of course the brand new Core Ultra 7 155H processor with Intel Arc graphics. Without further ado, let's get this out of the box. a nice little sleeve in the box here. Once again, they come through and I really like this. Um, I think it's a nice touch from Asus and I'm glad to see it in the retail packaging, of course. This, of course, is the sleeve and you can see it here. Uh, we'll take a look at it a little bit later, but I'm glad they have that. Let's put that to the side. And then we get the unit itself in the ponder blue, okay? So just a little bit more documentation, warranty information, yada, yada, yada. We know the drill, right? So what else do we get in here? Good to see this. This is the Asus Pen 2.0. Now, for those wondering, there is pen support just like you got on the 14X and this is uh, great to see that in the box. I like that. Again, $12.99, I want to get as much as I can as far as value is concerned. We'll look at that a little bit uh, in a little bit. And then, of course, on this side is the power charger. And this power charger is going to be your 65-watt USB Type-C. And you can see it etched in there. So 65-watt power charger. So this is the USB-A to the Ethernet dongle. Again, that's a nice value add. Again, I like the little touches that Asus does here to give you value. So that's good. Here you can see the ponder blue. So Lumia display, it's gonna have the good color accuracy, the good coverage of the color gamut. Number one OLED rated, according to them, I guess, I don't know who, who rated that. Uh, you got the Asus OLED care display protection, 70% reduction in the blue light, all that yada, yada, yada stuff, okay. And of course, let's see if we can open it with one finger, we can, you can see it there. Now this all metal design has excellent build quality. It also has a military standard A10H rating, meaning this can take a licking and keep on ticking. The build quality is really good here, folks. With just the unit alone, you're looking at 1.277 kilograms or two pounds, 13 ounces on the dot. We're gonna put the pen on there. So with the pen, you're looking at 1.294 kilograms. So with the pen, with the sleeve, 1.474 kilograms. And with the charging adapter, so the total travel weight, 1.691 kilograms or three pounds, 11.6 ounces. 
And that is your travel weight. So not too shabby as far as uh, pretty nice, thin and light to take with you on the go. Okay, let's check out the port selection. On the left side is a USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type A port, and then you get some heating vents. Moving over to the right side, you get two USB Type C Thunderbolt 4 ports that are full function, and next to that is a 3.5 millimeter microphone headphone combo jack, and finally an HDMI 2.1 TMDS port to round out the ports on this unit. All in all, a very good port selection. One nitpick though, I'd like to see those USB Type Type-C ports split on each side instead of being all on the right side. It's a little bit inconvenient, so just wanted to point that out. Okay, let's check out the internals of this laptop, and the first thing you'll notice is that single fan for cooling. We'll talk about the thermal performance as well as the fan noise later on. You also notice it now has a 75 watt hour battery. It's up from the 70 watt hour battery on that 14X OLED from last year. And then of course, we'll get into the battery life and that is coming later in this review as well. Now, as far as what's user upgradable, the M.2 PCIe Gen 4 SSD certainly has good enough reads and writes for what you need this to do certainly fast enough so that's been pretty good and that is user upgradable so we do appreciate that now unfortunately the ram is soldered into the motherboard not upgradable by the user but my review unit has 32 gigabytes of ram and it's the lp ddr5x ram and it is running in dual channel mode that's good to see now, as far as the wireless, you're looking at Wi-Fi 6E, Bluetooth 5.3. That combo card is soldered in, so it's not upgradable by the user. But good news on that front, the Wi-Fi, the Bluetooth, both have been working flawlessly. Okay, let's talk about the display, and it's pretty much unchanged from last year, as far as I can tell. 14 inches, 2880 by 1800. It's an OLED display, 16 to 10 aspect ratio, 0.2 millisecond response time. That's the same. It's also got 550 nits of peak brightness when watching high dynamic range content, 100% coverage of the color gamut. You're looking at really nice metrics here. As you can see here, excellent for doing content creation, Lightroom, Photoshop, video editing, color grading, definitely can be doable here because you got that great coverage of the color gamut, it's color accurate, it's got all the hallmarks of an OLED display, it's all there. And the touch layer here is excellent. The pinch to zoom, navigating the OS with your finger worked really well. And having that dynamic refresh rate up to 120 hertz gives you that really smooth scrolling, the very fluid experience, as you can see here, an excellent job here by Asus. And I love the fact that they once again give you the Asus Pen 2.0 in the box, no additional cost. It's got 4,096 levels of pressure sensitivity. So if you wanna take notes, sketch out diagrams, artwork, you have that option with this laptop, love it. And I wish other OEMs would do the same, give you more value here. And that's something Asus does very well. Okay, so this is the camera on the Asus ZenBook 14 OLED, new for 2024 as we head into the new year. And this is a 1080p camera, 30 frames per second. It's an IR camera. That means you can log in with face recognition with Windows Hello. Now, there's also a shutter switch, which is uh, located above the camera that allows you to turn off the webcam. That's always good. And it also has active noise cancellation here. So that means you're going to suppress a lot of the background noise. I have a pretty loud basketball game in the background as I'm recording this. You might hear a little bit of it, but I think it does a pretty decent job of suppressing that background noise. So if you have a vacuum going, a hairdryer going, crumpling some bags or something, it does a pretty good job of the suppression of that noise. So I want to know what you think. Let me know in the comment section below. Now it also has the AI effects. That means of course, this has the MPU. That means that it's gonna offload a lot of the tasks that the camera does in terms of background blur, auto framing, all that kind of stuff. It's gonna let the MPU handle all that. Now here's the auto framing, okay. You can see it's working pretty well. You got the eye contact, and then of course you got the background blur. This is the standard blur, and then this is the portrait blur. Again, these, quote unquote, AI effects are handled by the NPU. Again, let me know what you think in the comments section below.
Now, if you caught my live unboxing last week, you would know that we were having some major issues running some important benchmarks here, especially Geekbench 6. I wasn't able to get that running. Well, the good news is after a firmware update, after a BIOS update, and after a number of Windows updates, it seems to have solved the problem. I was able to run Geekbench 6. I was able to run PC Mark 10, which I wasn't able to do. So all the benchmarks are here. Let's get into it now. Now, as you know, this is running the Meteor Lake processor, AKA the Core Ultra 7 155H. It's got 16 cores, six performance cores, eight efficient cores, two low power efficient cores, and a total of 22 threads. Now, as we take a look at these benchmarks, it becomes abundantly clear that the single core and multi-core performance of the CPU is not that much better than last year's 13th gen processor. In fact, it might even be less performance than last year, as we'll talk about in a moment. But when it comes to graphics, there is no doubt the Intel Arc graphics certainly trump the Iris Xe in pretty much every aspect. And when it comes to Cinebench 2024, CPU single core performance, a score of 101 actually tied the Acer Swift Go 14, the other Meteor Lake laptop I have here in the studio, at least one that I can talk about. And then when it comes to the multi-core performance, a score of 732, which of course wasn't quite as good as the Swift Go, but not quite as good as the MacBook Pro 16 or some of the AMD variants we looked at in 2023. And what was a bit surprising was we're not seeing actual increase in performance when we look year over year as far as Cinebench R23. In fact, we're seeing a decrease in performance, not a big decrease, but a decrease nonetheless. So that has been pretty interesting when it comes to performance. And then when we looked at the Geekbench, it was a mixed bag. We saw a little bit better multi-core performance year over year, but we saw a decrease in single core performance. And that has been the theme so far with this Meteor Lake processor. And while we're not seeing big single and multi-core improvements, we are seeing major graphic improvements, especially with that integrated graphics we're using here, the Arc graphics, which are a lot better than the Intel Iris Xe. And as you can see, very playable frame rates on some of the more popular titles. Just got to play with the settings, of course, but very good numbers nonetheless. And we're seeing a very efficient chipset with less power consumption than the previous generation and coming more in line with the AMD chipsets as well as the M series in the Apple Silicon. So we're seeing much better power consumption with this Meteor Lake processor than we did in the 13th gen processor. So very good in that regard. And when I ran the Time Spy stress test to see if this will thermal throttle under heavy load, it got a passing score of 98.4%, meaning it detected very little, if any, thermal throttling. That's really good. But when it comes to the surface temperatures, I noticed a couple of hot spots above the keyboard, below the display, where the heating vents are, showing it can get a little bit warm, a little bit more warmer than I'd like, although it didn't get overly hot where you place your fingers on the keyboard. And that's been pretty good. And it did heat up quite a bit on the underside, reaching 60, 61 degrees Celsius, which is too hot for my liking. And under load in the performance mode, it can get as high as 49 decibels when it comes to the fan noise, which is definitely noticeable. But when you're in the balance mode doing everyday tasks, the fan was not much of an issue. And people, we're seeing a big increase when it comes to battery life. Now keep in mind, this has a 75 watt hour battery versus the smaller battery we saw last year, 70 watt hours on the ZenBook 14X OLED. Now check this out, 14 hours and 18 minutes, which is the modern office battery test result versus nine hours and 44 minutes from last year. That's a big improvement when it comes to video playback, 15 hours and 37 minutes versus the nine hours and 10 minutes, another big increase there. Even on the gaming test, you're seeing an increase there. So the overall takeaway is the Meteor Lake processors are efficient when it comes to battery life, and that's something we like to see. Now, for those wondering, yes, you can open the lid with one finger and the screen goes back 180 degrees. Now, as far as the hinges, they're on really well. I saw very little, if any, screen wobble when typing. That's been pretty good. Now, speaking of the keyboard, I like the tactility. I like the key travel. I like the overall feedback. It was very comfortable for typing out long documents, emails, and the like. The overall typing experience was very good. Now, it also has a multi-stage backlight. And against these dark keys, it was easy to see the white 
LED backlight, so the contrast was very good for getting work done in a dark room and a dimly lit environment. Now the touchpad is also very good as far as scrolling, doing all the gestures, but one difference from last year's model is they no longer give you that capacitive numpad that you can use by the press of a button. It's gone, it's not available, at least not on this model. So for those that wanna crunch numbers, you'll have to add an external numpad for those that wanna do that. So that is just something to be aware of. Now the Asus ZenBook 14 OLED for 2024 has some pretty nice speakers with Dolby Atmos, they're Harman Kardon tuned. So the Dolby Atmos will help with the spatial audio, but I want you to be the judge. You let me know what you think in the comment section below. I think the overall sound is actually pretty good, but again, you be the judge. All right, now let's give it a listen. Okay, let's bring it all home. What do I think about the Asus ZenBook 14 OLED for 2024? Excellent 120 hertz OLED touch display with pen support. Love the fact that it comes with the pen, sleeve, and ethernet dongle included at no additional cost. The Intel Arc graphics are a big step forward for the integrated GPU. 32 gigabytes of RAM is always welcome. Good audio, thin and light design, much improved battery life, a pretty massive improvement, I would say, and now has the MPU to help with things such as the AI features that you get on the camera and so forth. That is really welcome here. Now, as far as the negatives, the soldered RAM, the glossy display, the Ponder Blue will be a fingerprint magnet. Prices out of the gate is double last year's model. If you can get last year's model, $699. This is $1299. Fan noise is something to contend with. It also can get pretty warm under load. Things looked a little dicey from the beginning, but things settled down once I did the firmware update, the BIOS update, and all the Windows updates that were necessary. So far, looking pretty good, and I'd like to see some more optimization from the Meteor Lake processor, but my overall takeaway is we're headed in the right direction. So please hit the like button, please subscribe, please share this video. Don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device or something out there you think I should review. I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Don't forget to follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and that platform formerly known as Twitter. So until next time, this is Andrew, and I'll see you in the next video.